made me not eat for days. I became an addict because of my eating disorder. I would put a needle to my arm to be thin. But this thin, beautiful California girl was not at all who she appeared to be. When I restrict, I become a totally different person. I'm mean, I'm crass, I'm intolerable. Whatever is mine for the I take. Being strung out and not eating, I couldn't afford my apartment anymore, so I stole from a former employer, and I ended up getting caught. Getting arrested was definitely a rock bottom. Terrified, Suzanne decided to get sober, but with sobriety came a weight gain, 70 pounds. I feel so desperate being 70 plus pounds overweight. I believe that my eating disorder is a way to punish myself for the things that I've done in my past. The more pain, the better. Suzanne goes to jail in 24 days. We have to get her destructive behavior under control. There's no time to lose. Knowing that my eating disorder has been the cause of all these problems. It's really scary. Since her conviction, Suzanne's bulimia has intensified, putting her at risk of life-threatening dehydration and heart failure. You seem happy. She was happy, and she was always spunky, and she was always the life of the party. Even when she was very, very thin, she always thought, she, her self-image was always so low, and I, I never could understand mm -hmm. why, because I never saw that in her. <laughs> and these were like the, the ones from last year. That's when everything kind of came crumbling down? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what do you think when you look at that person? I look at this picture and it's hard to not dissect it all the time. In dissecting the body or dissecting what was going on at that time? The body. You want to go back to that? Yeah, and smaller. When did you first know about her eating disorder? Well, she's talked about having this problem for a long time, but I never realized how serious it was mm -hmm. until this year. Suzanne was always the good girl. Suzanne would go up and down in her weight as a kid. I don't know. I don't know why I didn't know. I hold a lot of resentment towards my mom for not being there, knowing that I had a problem. I felt kind of like shoved in the back in a corner. I was obviously sick. In 24 days, Suzanne will be behind bars serving a sentence for theft, unless she can find a job. If I get a job, I can go to work furlough, which is a facility that I can stay in, go to the job and come back and spend the night, versus go to a lockdown facility. I don't know if Suzanne is trying hard enough to find a job. She tells me she looks. She does a lot of looking on the internet because that's less threatening. That's close by. There are expectations that I just can't meet right now like getting a job. Going to a lockdown jail will trigger Suzanne's eating disorder. I have no doubt she needs to go to work furlough. But I have a hunch that Suzanne's complacency about getting a job is really about her eating disorder. Furlough work release program. It becomes really real, doesn't it? Yeah. It's a little better than the jail. Yeah. My thoughts, Suzanne, if I'm given those two options, I'm knocking on everyone's door trying to get a job to make sure I'm not sitting in a jail cell. So I'm wondering if there's a small part of you with the eating disordered brain that's going, oh, worst was worse, I'll sit in a jail cell and lose weight. That's the part of me that, like, is reaching out for help right okay, now. Okay, so that's the part of you that's afraid. Yeah. If Suzanne's desire to be thin really makes a jail term look good, she needs treatment now.
Lisa has never openly discussed her eating disorder with anyone, especially her mother. We're at lunch, and you've gotten the probably the healthiest thing you can get. If you were going to eat it, you probably would have had more restrictions on it. Well, would you have eaten it that way? Well, I would not eat the bread, and I'm not going to eat the dressing. Um, would you have any dressing on it? No, no. I wouldn't eat the almonds or uh, maybe some cranberries. And I like the cheese, and I'd eat the lettuce. But I'm not eating it now because I'm going to eat dinner later. How many meals a day do you usually eat? Two. Me too. And what are we calling a meal? Well, I eat in the morning. And what do you eat? Um, I've got like Good point. three different things that I choose from in the morning, and it's either uh, a special K bar, or a bag of vegetables, or an English muffin with mustard. At night, I either eat a turkey sandwich on an English muffin, or a salad, or soup, or vegetables. I do believe you can feel free of it. You gotta want to, though. I know. Because the other thing is that I always say you could have a billion people come and rescue you and help you and mm -hmm. do everything until you're ready. It's just never gonna happen. I mean, she's lost so much of her shape. I worry that, you know, will she be here tomorrow? I asked Lisa to invite her entire family over for dinner. No doubt, Lisa's eating disorder will have a seat at the table. So you're making your salad separate from like yes. the very beginning, not making the salad and then just giving yourself some. Right. I want to know exactly what's in mine. Right, OK. Hey. Until tonight, Lisa's family has lived in terrified silence, watching her waste away. We've been a little bit complacent in believing that it'd get better without talking about it. And, and obviously, that's not the case. On one hand, I say I want people to talk about it. And then on one hand, I don't. I want to talk about it because I want to recognize it and put it away. And then I don't because I don't want to give it up. I believe it's time for Lisa's family to confront her anorexia. I know this is probably the first time you guys have all really talked about it, am I right? Oh, yes. As a group? Yes. Do you feel like you have to bite your tongue a lot? Yeah. You do. You do have to weigh your words a lot of times. Yeah. Really. I don't think that we ignored it, per se, but something would get broached. You could tell it upset her, so then we stopped. Well, I don't I don't want Lisa to feel like we're ganging up on her. Yeah. Is that what you, you, that's what you feel normally, right? So how do we help? Being there for her. I think right now she's in such a, uh, kind of a routine of doing what she does, and it's how she exists. And she's so isolated. I mean, you see it. I mean, the whole family's like sitting here and talking. I could watch it. The whole family's like just enjoying themselves. And Lisa's just like an island by herself over here. Wow. This is so much of a part of me. I'm afraid to let it go. It's a friend to me, it's comfort to me, it's security, it's my strength. It's just been a part of me for so long in some shape or form. So for me to move on, I really don't know how that will be. It's hard to let it go. I've secured Suzanne six day a week outpatient treatment at the Eating Disorder Center of California. With a pending jail sentence, she has less than a month to get her eating disorder under control. While you're here, you know, you're going to be getting lunch and dinner and a snack. OK. And so, you know, you'll need to do breakfast on your own and a couple of snacks. To talk about the food makes me uncomfortable. To focus on a plan makes me uncomfortable because it's not my plan. It's somebody else's plan. You have to eat in front of everybody. You do. You're going to sit at a table with your peers and two staff members. You have to eat everything. You have to eat 100%. I thought maybe I could spit my food into a cup, but I'm sure they don't even give you cups. I thought maybe I could put food into a napkin. I'm going to have no outlet to let out my anxiety. 